there's something big happening in which me, uh, well, which I and a number of other people are seeming to recognize as teachers who did not intend to be in this position. We, we just sort of became that way. People told us what we were, and then we became it. When I was, I don't know, maybe six years old, I tried to figure out what was going on with this whole reality stuff. And, and really, it started that early. And everything that I aimed my life at was to try to figure out reality. Just like figure out what are the rules? Are there, is there some kind of user interface to reality? If I knew where the buttons were, could I push them? If I figured out the strategy, would it be like a superpower? As long as it's consistent with what you observe, you can create any, idea, any reality you want. For example, I've created the reality doesn't mean it's true. I've created the reality that I always win. That's it. I just that in my mind, I have decided that that's the filter on the world is that in the end I always win. Oh yeah, I don't win every point, but I always win the game. Oh yeah, maybe I don't win every game, but I'm definitely going to win the match, you know? So so that's sort of a a fiction if you will that I've invented for myself. So I live in that world and then probably confirmation bias and selective memory allows me to live there. And I live in a world in which I always seem to win. And is that true? I don't know. David, do you have a good question for me? Hi. I was thinking about, I remember when you, you were posting your blog posts, this is back in 2016, um, and I was fascinated, like, whoa, this is weird, like Trump could actually win, and then following that all the way to now, and then learning about persuasion, um, I feel like people used to find authors and read books, like what we're doing now, finding people, like uh, Eric Weinstein, I think is a good example, I think you uh, are a great example. And I'm wondering if, is there sort of a, it seems like maybe it's because I listen to you so much, but I look at everything in terms of persuasion now, like, what are they trying to get me to think? You know, <laughs> where's the dog that's not barking? It, get, it, gets, kind of a, it gets kind of addicting. And I, I wonder if, um, how do you stay sort of fascinated uh, with what you're doing without becoming bored? Because I find the more I've learned from you, the more boring my friends have become. <laughs> I don't know if... That's kind of sad, right? But it's, it's sort of because when I speak to, like, say, my family now, and, and I, I have started to use, the, like, the sort of reframing technique, uh, and um, I can tell they don't like it, but I think <laughs> – but, but what I noticed is, like, two weeks later, they'll start to say the same things that I said uh, two weeks prior, and it's like, right. it's, it, it's, it's like, a, it's like a, a framework virus. Do you know what I mean? And I just wondered – how do you stay, um, I guess, interested and, and, and do you have plans to develop this maybe like to go into cognitive science? Like this, it's, a, it's an incredible like technology. I don't know how to explain it. <laughs> well, you, you kid on so many points. So let me, let me hit a few of these myself. Number one, there's something uh, very big and important happening. And I know a number of people would probably confirm this. So Probably, probably people who would agree with me, with me would be, you know, Jordan Peterson, Eric Weinstein, probably Joe Rogan, um, you know, Mike Cernovich. And, and, and here's the thing. People privately tell me all the time, all the time, that they treat me as, as sort of a mentor. Like a, a, the person who, who teaches them how to navigate life, and it's all the stuff that the school system and your own parents didn't know. Yeah, they couldn't teach it to you because they didn't know. But, you know, if you listen to, uh, I always, Mike Cernovich is my, like, universal reference because he, he fits so many examples. But if you listen to him, you're going to get smarter. There's yep. no way around it, you know. And, you know, you listen to Eric Weinstein, you're just going to get smarter. And I could name a bunch of others, right? Um, so it feels like, and then, and then there are people who uh, – are teaching through the people that bring in, you know, the Dave Rubens, for example, Joe Rogan's in that category. So they're, they are accidental teachers and accidental mentors for a generation that got, um, that I think feels like they were shorted 
in life strategy. And I don't know if it's because the strategy got more complicated than it used to be. Maybe it was obvious 200 years ago. It's like, yeah, you're going to grow up and inherit the farm, so you don't need too much strategy. Mm -hmm. But now you really need to navigate a complicated situation. It's better to have systems than goals. It's better to have a talent stack than one narrow thing. So you have to you have to take a sort of a statistical, more uh, rational approach to this complicated environment. So the first thing is, there's something big happening in which me, uh, well, which I and a number of other people are seeming to recognize as teachers who did not intend to be in this position. We we just sort of became that way. People told us what we were, and then we became it. I've often said that. Um, the you don't tell your customers what you're selling they tell you i mean you might tr you might try it first and say oh i'm selling this widget but then the customers say hey no no i really like the service that you have and i like your cafeteria you're more of a restaurant and then next thing you know you're a restaurant um when when dilbert first came out it was a generic cartoon but my customer said no it's a workplace cartoon and i'd say no it's not he's hardly ever in the workplace and all my customers would say, no, it's a workplace cartoon. So I turned it into a workplace cartoon. Were the customers right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they were right. They, I mean, it, was, it made the whole difference is just listening to the customer and then responding. Um, there's a second part to this, which is um, – what was the other part of the question? I was sort of wondering like, where do you where do you think it's heading? Like we went from books, now we're doing oh, yeah. people. Yeah, where, where it's heading? How, how could this evolve? Yeah. Cause, I mean, real quick, when you were talking about like leaving the house, I was like, dude, you can't die because you're the most fascinating person I'm listening to right now. <laughs> so if you go, uh, uh, I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure people will start popping up because of the internet. But man, your, your uh, knowledge is it's been fun. That's the thing about it. It's just really fun. You know? Well, yeah, I, I'm not going to die um, because I get to create my own reality, and that's not in it. Nice. So, um, well, you know, part of what I talk about is that if you have different uh, experience in different domains, they, they're they not just additive. They're they're almost multiplicative. Is that a word? Excellent. You know, if, if, if you know economics and then you, you also know psychology, it's not twice as good. It's more like three times as good, and then then you add on top of that. Oh, you're also a public good public speaker. It's not you know w you know it's not fifty percent better. It's it's four times better. So just learning the the math of life is important, and I, and I feel like I had a, a special window into that that I had, I felt like almost a responsibility to talk about because my window was somewhat accidental because I've just had a such a, a broad experience that I've seen things that other people haven't seen. And I thought, well, maybe if I tell you what I've seen, you can get there faster without having to you know, have that job and stuff. And I got to tell you that when I was, I don't know, maybe six years old, I tried to figure out what was going on with this whole reality stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and really, it started that early. And everything that I aimed my life at was to try to figure out reality. Just like figure out what are the rules? Are is there some kind of user interface to reality? If I knew where the buttons were, could I push them? If I figured out the strategy, would it be like a superpower? Is is everything just random? And and I I've been a a real searcher. You know, I went through all the religions. What's there? I looked into you know, ESPs or anything there, and I spent serious time on all of these things. I looked at ghosts and you know every every kind of you know. Uh, did the aliens build the pyramids? Now, I'm not, a, I'm not a believer in, I don't think, any of the ones that I mentioned. But you, you become insatiably interested in picking up stuff. And then you learn stuff like you, you hear Warren Buffett talk. And he tells you, oh, here are the you know, three or four rules of investing. And you say to yourself, whoa, that's it. I found a little part of the, the, the user interface. Diversify. Buy and hold, and don't sell it until the reason you bought it changes. You know, and, and make sure you have good management. Just a few little rules, and then that that little part of the user interface of life got filled in. And now I know that, right? I have a degree also, but it helped that Warren Buffett said it so clearly. So you start putting together these pieces. When I took hypnosis, suddenly I understood how people worked, and there were people were completely confusing to me. 
because I thought they were rational, and they, they just kept not being rational. And I kept trying to make them rational, and I thought I was rational, and they weren't, wouldn't, and, and I could make them rational with my, with my great arguments, and it never worked <laughs> until, until I realized that it's not even a thing. You know, it, first of all, I have no reason to believe I'm rational, not all the time, and I certainly am not going to convince other people because there's no rationality to work with. You know, they're just people who rationalize after the fact. So now you've got like this little finance piece, you're like, okay, I think I know all the buttons because there actually aren't that many buttons for the whole investing world that are important. There are lots of buttons, but they're mostly unimportant. Then you say, well, what, what about management? What about economics? You know, do, do you really follow the money? And, and is the money really determining everything? And, and is it because of money and, and the, the time value of money and knowing about sunk costs? So when I took economics... I learned economics to understand reality. That's why I took it, like explicitly in my head. Now, I thought it could you know, give me a number of opportunities, and that was good. But the main reason was I wanted to understand how the economy works. And then I learned enough. You know, I'm, I'm no expert on it, but enough of that so that that part of the, the user interface to reality got filled in. So, you know, I, I'm at a certain age now where little by little, I filled in the real estate on my screen, you know, just to use that analogy. Yeah, I figured, I got the buttons and, yep. and put them in. And, you know, part of it is building the talent stack. Part of it is, you know, seeing, seeing the field. Part of it is just being a certain age. And um, when it all started coming together, the, there was some period, I, some, at some point I realized that because it's such a, a little increment every day, you don't realize that you get smarter every day right? Uh, until you look back at, you know, 30 years ago yourself and you say, whoa, I oh picked up a few, I yeah. picked up a few tricks. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I saw some things and it's never been more obvious than I would say this week because the amount of, uh, you know, BS, BS and hoaxes that we've seen around coronavirus and in politics lately. And I think, you know, you've probably watched me just pick out the hoaxes just right out of the pile. I mean, you've seen me look into the fog and say, okay, that one, boop, let's pick this one out. That, that one's probably not real. Yep. I'm, not, I'm not right every time, yep. but my, my pattern recognition engine just has a lot of, a lot of miles on it, so I can just see it. I don't, I don't have to research it. I can just see it. So oh, that, that's not real, boop, like the... Yeah, the Cuban uh, embassy with the secret sonic, the sonic weapon. Sonic, yeah, that was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't have to. I don't have to do research. I just have to be me and have lived in the world enough that when I hear the story about the secret sonic weapon, I, I don't need to ask any more questions. <laughs> now, <laughs> now, for, now, for those of you who are younger, like if you know, say you're 30 and you're listening to this, you're probably saying to yourself, "Hey, old man, that's not a thing." You you can't just look at it and know, you know, because you know I'm pretty smart. I'm 30. I got good grades. I'm looking at it. I didn't know. There's no way, old man. You know, you you don't learn that. Well, you do. <laughs> you really do. <laughs> the the extra vision you get with every few years of your life, like every five years, you just go up a level, and it's like uh, it's like X-ray vision. You know, I, I've talked about seeing around corners. Uh, Mike Cernovich is another one who has x-ray vision. Uh, he can actually see around a corner. Like, he, he's not just straight lining the future. He, he's, he's like going down around a corner and down an, all, uh, down an alleyway. He goes, okay, down there, take a right, down the corner, behind the dumpster, you're going to find a surprise. It's yellow. And then you go down there and there's like this yellow thing. And you're like, how the hell did you do that? Well, he just sees more of the field. That's all. So, uh, thank you for your question. That was a fun one. Yeah, thanks so much. All right. Take care. I can hear you. What's your question, Monica? Okay. So my question is the following. It seems to me that you always say for a given um, event, there are two different uh, points of view or more, that you will see the same thing happening, have a completely different interpretation. So from your point of view, is there anything like the truth? And how can one resolve uh, or a group of people resolve on coming up with a kind of... Well, uh, Good question. 
So there's, there probably is something like the truth if you're talking about math or, or physics, or at least it's you know, true enough for our purposes. But here's, here's the thought experiment. Think of all the plants and animals and instinct and insects in the world. Do any of them have a good understanding of reality? And I think you'd agree, no. No, they're, they're pretty much just going through life and reproducing, and that's all they need to do. So if you think that evolution is how we got here, was there any reason that we would have evolved to understand reality when there's no utility to it? Because we can see every other plant and species and you know, bird and, and an elephant. They don't really understand the reality. They don't know they're on a planet that's in space. They don't know that they'll die someday. They don't know anything. And it doesn't make any difference. So why would we be the only species that evolved to know something that has no value. There's just no value in knowing the real, the real base reality. So, but it makes more sense that we evolved to imagine that we do because we can test, it's easy to test, that we're irrational creatures who rationalize after the fact. And once you realize that that's our normal mode, that we make these irrational decisions and then we fill in the the weird reasons after the fact, and they're not even they're not even rational most of the time, or a lot of the time. So once you realize that we're a completely irrational species, there's no other species, plant or animal, that understands the universe and doesn't need to. We don't need to, because if you know, I use the example of, you know, I go shopping uh, back when you could do things like go shopping. And I'm in the grocery store, and you know, there's a, a Muslim to my left and a Hindu to my right. We're all in different realities, <laughs> you know, because one, one believes that, you know, God is watching and judging and, you know, the afterlife is, is the bigger reality. The Hindus, you know, th- thinks maybe reincarnation. I'm thinking, well, maybe it's all a simulation. We're not in the same reality. And that extends to politics. You know, the people who think that Trump is a monster really see it. Like, that's, that's what they see and feel. All the information that they're receiving is consistent with that. And yet, sitting right next to them, in the same room, somebody watching the same stuff is getting a completely different movie and reality. So, if there is a base truth, it would not be available to us. Because our brains, there's no reason to assume our brains could do that. They're just not that tool. In the same way that you would assume a cotton ball would not be a good can opener. It just isn't for that. It was never made for that. There's no surprise that it doesn't work for that. So there might be a base reality. It's unavailable to us. And so we have to act, uh, we have to act like we know reality, but we're just sort of guessing. Is that what you wanted? <laughs> well, there's still a collective uh, consciousness, I guess, or, or a possibility of... Well, there, there's definitely something to the fact that collectively we decide on some truths. But even then, there's always at least one other camp that did not agree on that truth. So, um, yeah, I'm a big, candid, a big uh, proponent of the idea that reality is subjective, and that's the good news. Because if reality is subjective, you can sort of craft it the way you want it. You can, you can create your own reality. As long as it's consistent with what you observe, you can create any, idea, any reality you want. For example, I've created the reality. doesn't mean it's true. I've created the reality that I always win. That's it. I just, that, in my mind, I've decided that that's the filter on the world is that in the end I always win. Oh, yeah, I don't win every point, but I always win the game. Oh, yeah, maybe I don't win every game. But I'm definitely going to win the match, you know. So, so that's sort of a, a fiction, if you will, that I've invented for myself. So I live in that world, and then probably confirmation bias and selective memory allows me to live there. And I live in a world in which I always seem to win. And is that true? I don't know. All I know is that because I've set that filter... Every, every piece of information that comes in confirms that it's true, even if it isn't, which is the cool thing. So does it hurt me to have this filter that says I always win? Probably not. There's probably no downside to it if it's wrong. 
It's just a, a harmless, maybe as helpful filter that makes me feel good, makes me work harder, keeps me optimistic, makes me try harder because I figure, ah, it's just one more, you know, one more minute and I'm going to win at any moment here. And you see how that plays out. If, if any of you were with me when the election happened in 2016, and I made the most ridiculous prediction in 2015 that Trump would win it all, and then he did. And I'm sitting there watching this unfold, and you, you talk about doubting reality. That night, and you probably all had this same experience in some form, when you're watching the, the vote tallies come in, and I had created this world, and I'm, I'm completely aware of the fact it's fiction. I've created for myself a fictional world in which I always win. And then I did the most ridiculous prediction, put everything into it, did it in public, you know, basically risked my entire reputation forever, you know, a third of my income. I mean, I just gambled everything on the stupidest prediction in the world. Why? Because I always win. <laughs> I, because I always win, and then I won. And so it seemed to reinforce the thing I've, the fiction I've created. Now, did I cause it to happen? Well, that would be, you know, maybe a interpretation that the simulation is something that you could steer and you're, you're a player in it or something like that. So um, certainly we can create our own reality within, within certain bounds. You know, I can't, I can't will myself to fly. But I can tell myself I always win, and then I live in that reality, whether it's true or not. Anyway, thanks for the question. Thank you. That was probably weirder than you were expecting.